In this video, we're going to show you how to do something about this hideous seat cushion that we got in our C10 pickup. And we'll go through how to completely redo it with a seat kit from LMC Truck in this video. So stay tuned and follow us along. pull your seat forward, and I've got it slid forward, not just pulling the back forward, but the entire thing slid forward. You'll find out down here in the bottom, there's a bolt on this side and an equivalent bolt on the opposite side. I've already pulled the opposite side one, but we're going to pull this one out. This is used as a 9 16 bolt, and you'll need to take that out with a ratchet and an extension. truck box here with our seat cover in it. Just haven't had time to put it in yet. Give me an idea. $260.99. But this is actually a pretty good deal because if you figure out the fabric and everything here, this is one of those times where it's probably good to buy the item. This is a reproduction of the original seat cover that you would have had in the truck. Got it black because we're changing the color of the truck from what it was original. So you have an upper and a lower. This looks like probably our lower. And I think this is our upper. Right here. We also have what they're using for hog rings and a hog ring plier. Now I have my own hog ring plier. It's actually a little bit more healthy than that. And I have real hog rings that I might use. I may or may not use these. Okay. So you need your star driver, and that's a 3 8 You're going to have to remove one fastener on each end. That's going to take the top seat cushion off of the bottom seat cushion. And you're really going to have to go pick up on these tools. It's also the same tool that you use for working with the seat belt system in the vehicle. I also have a nice pointed end, so it's very easy to install. There we go. Now we're going to go along and remove all these hog rings that you can see on the back of the seat. I'm going to try a heavy duty nippers here and see if I can just cut them, and I can. So you want something like this, they work really good. This is old, okay? It's probably older or as old as I am. There we go. But you want to go along and you want to cut all these off so you can get the old seat cover off. Here you'll notice that we've got the outside back portion undone with the hog rings, but there are also hog rings fastening the front portion to the springs in several spots that we've got to cut those out in order to finish releasing this piece. One of the things I want to show you is you'll see because the fabric is warm here, there's actually a wire installed all the way along the bottom of the front seat cushion. That's what you're going to fasten ultimately to the springs here. There we go. It 
So there we have our seat back, and you can see the sorta the person who had this sorta tried to repair it before. And we're going to work with it this way because the only way they want to sell you these cushions is both top and bottom. You can get the bottom separate, you can get the top separate. So we'll probably put some filler material in here, possibly cotton or something else that we're going to fill in to smooth this out instead of having to have to replace this whole cushion set because it's expensive to replace the whole cushion set. I put on my leather apron because when you do wire brushing they can fling little wires at you. So I'm going to wire brush the supports here off. I'm not worried about what's going to be covered, but down here and then they're going to get sprayed black. cushion here to our back porch because it makes a good table to work on it now. We got our cover that we're going to put on and we're going to start the process of putting this on to the actual seat cushion. Of course this is a seat back as we were working on before. We have a low spot in our seat which you might have noticed before. Whoever had had the vehicle had replaced these two parts. We ground a little bit of that so we got this contour not too bad but there's a low spot here. So here we have about a half inch thickness of green foam. It feels about like our yellow foam. It just happens to be green and we have some scrap material here. Flip it around, see what fits best. Yep, that was better with that. So we're going to cut out a piece and add it to the seat in this area. To a little further. That's going to be our roughly sized piece that we're going to stick in here. Over just a teeny that will work. A contact cement. So we're going to put it on both surfaces, let it tack up for a few minutes, and then we'll actually put the pieces together. It's a little breezy out here this afternoon. I'm going to spray it. You want a real nice good coat on there. Generous does not hurt in this case. And you want this to tack up a couple minutes before you go and push them together. Now we're tacked up, so we're going to press our piece in place. Make sure it's good and down. And now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to do what we did before with a wire brush, but we won't bother showing you that. You've seen how that works, and we're going to trim this up a little bit. cover basically on, long way from finished, and we'll clean it off when we're done, but shows so far it looks like our foam's doing pretty good. If we have to, we might add some more stuff in here and there, but so far it doesn't look too bad. We're not real hip on a couple of things they gave us here. First of all, hog ring pliers here. This thing, you can see how cheaply made that is. That's a piece of junk. I went and got my good one. So this is a good hog ring pliers. It's by Deckers. It's what they really use on pigs. This line should work. These are the hog rings they give you, which are sort of a bent staple, and you have to break them apart and use a side cutters to break them apart. Haven't been real thrilled with those either. So I got Deckers Hump Hills pig rings here. These are what I normally use when I'm doing upholstery. These work a lot better. And for a little bit of investment, I'd go get these and get myself a good tool instead and use that. Along here, you have a series of wires that they put. You need to put a hog ring in each of the wires. Now, one of the things I've noted is this is actually longer than it needs to be right now. 
the original one used a wire here. All we've got is a plastic cord weld. So we're going to hog ring it across to each of these wire points, keeping our line up here as straight as possible, going all the way across the seat. And then we'll come back and do our next little step. On the back of the seat here, you can see that we've got two hog rings in six places. Those are each of those wires. First, we hog ring through the vinyl itself. Then we fold it back up to get their welting and hog ring that whole assembly. So it's double hog ring because it seems to be a little longer than you really want it. And I swear you want to have it through that welting when you're done. They didn't give us a wire. They just gave us plastic welting on this reproduction. So I would definitely do the two hog ring style like we did there. A little too much wind noise in this area has caused us to want to voice this over. The ends of the seat cushion seem to be a little bit larger than necessary. Might just be that the foam has shrunk over time. So what I'm here pointing out is our solution, which is use a product called New Foam. This is a product in this case about two inches thick, picked up at Joanne Fabrics, and that product you can actually separate into sheets and cut, and we use that to fill the ends. Now here you're seeing I'm working on the front portion of that seat cushion and pulling it around and hog ringing it on the back just to show you how it was done. Again, we're going through those wire sections and holding it together with the hog rings. We're going to start by removing these pivot points on the bottom seat cushion. One thing you should do when you're doing this is keep in mind which way the parts go. Of course, take a picture with your cell phone if you need to remember it. Your seat tracks have a fastener here at the front and a fastener at the rear. Now this one's going to have to come out, the other one's going to at least have to be loose. That goes for both seat tracks and both ends of the seat. The other things you want to note here is you've got hog rings all over the place. They're running on the sides about three inches apart and across the front of the seat they'll run about four inches apart. Again, you can look at the video or you can take pictures if your seat's a little different when you're doing it. Now your seat track wire has something real important. I put a piece of tape here so I remember where it is actually hog ringed in the center. If you don't have it set up that way, this wire is going to be too long and you're actually not going to be able to operate the seat tracks move the seat fore and aft. So you've got to put a piece of tape down and note there are actually two hog rings in the center. One is fastening just the fabric, the other one is actually here to fasten the wire so that you end up with the correct length wire when you pull on the seat track control. Now I'm going to go around and clip all the hog rings. We want to make you watch all of that but again I'm using my large nippers to cut them all and then if necessary I'll use a side cutters to come back and remove them. We've placed our seat cover on the lower seat cushion here. A couple of things to note. Long side obviously goes to the front, short side goes to the back, but your hardest problem you're going to have is at these rear corners. So we start up front, carefully got on, got as much as possible, and very carefully work from the center out in the back to get the two corners. Because these are the parts you could rip because of how the fact that you're actually going metal directly under the vinyl. Now we're going to flip it over and show you how we start putting it on the rest of the way. Along the back edge, you happen to have a upright metal edge. And on the seat cover, you happen to have a plastic piece sewn on here. That clamps right onto that piece. So you just press it on to install it. Now up front, you'll notice that you have this folded over piece that has holes in it, oval holes, and you have another spot down here that is also a piece of metal sticking out horizontal. That's for this other clamping piece of plastic, which you have to work down in and onto that lower piece. A little harder to put it in there. But that's theoretically what you're going to do with it. And as I said, it's much easier on the back 
than down here. It's kind of hard to get your fingers in, in there. And you'll have to fiddle with it until you finally get it on. One other thing to note on your seat, originally they had seat belts passing through in two holes. The seat cover does not come with holes there, and we're not going to put a center seat belt in the vehicle right now anyway. And even when we do, we think we'll pass it between the seats instead of using these two holes here. So they're going to be effectively covered up by the seat cover. Notice they started in the center, and I'm going to work out each way. We're not going to bore you with that, but we're going to go along to each one of these holes and we're going to put a hog ring in, giving it a little pull to get the front of this as smooth as we can get it. If I can't, I can't. So let's see if I can do it. There, see what's supposed to happen? Hmm. All right, you'll notice we've got the hog rings all the way around the front from corner to corner right now. And then we are able to for sure get our lock strip pushed in down here as we told you on that second straight out piece of metal. So now that's installed. On each corner, there are actually two screw holes. And the second one we haven't worried about yet because we don't actually have enough screws because they weren't in the seat. There's supposed to be a plastic cover that goes in this area anyway. We'll figure that out in the future. So we've got one on each corner that we put in right now. The other thing, this piece of welding was originally fastened on the other seat cover to one of the wires under here. So we've done that with a couple of hog rings on each end too, completing basically the seat for the moment. Next up, we'll put back our seat tracks. We put back the seat tracks, which were painted up black just to look decent. Most of it can't be seen anyway. The way to do this, of course, put your back two bolts in because your front bolt has to go through the vinyl. So set these in for both seat tracks. Then up front, you can use an awl to find your hole and put your front bolt in, bolt these down. Then you want to switch to putting your wire in the center in position. Remember we mark that with a piece of tape to show us where our center was because the wire is extra long and you have to put an extra hog ring in here to actually allow the wire to run in. And I also put a little bit of my assembly loop there so it'll always be slippery and so now everything is possible to actuate again. Be sure to add a little light oil so that the seat tracks will operate. And you can see that works real nice. We've already installed our seat with the front bolts and what we're going to do is show you how to install the catch mechanism and what we did actually make a hole over here will be the same thing we're going to do make a hole here. Now I can feel right there that's where the hole has to be. I'm going to feel with your finger. Take yourself a soldering iron that's good and hot. And you make a hole like that just instantaneously. It works great on vinyl. Then you can put your assembly back in, which we've obviously repainted, etc. And now we'll just tighten it up. Before we go and put the seat back in the cab of the pickup for now, which obviously sometime we'll do the floor and the carpet, but not yet, I want to talk to you about the JEG seat belts that we put in. You can get seat belts from other suppliers they're going to cost you like 90 bucks or more and the JEG seat belts are about 55 to 60 range they work just fine and this just shows you how we put them in we're using the original mount from GM except we have cut off the ear you'll understand that when you take your old seat belt off if you're going to use the JEGs you cut the ear off the side mounts perfectly for your reel right here you mount up here for your pass-through for your seat belt and then mount down here on the floor for your anchor point. Very easy to do if you cut the ear off it works great. The real thing that you have to modify is they come with these short seat belt pieces but even if they'd been longer it was going to give us a different problem because it was going to be an issue of how to get it up in the right place. All I did here was get bolts that are the right length, which I just happen to have in a bin, 
Those are four inches tall. Added a little bracket that I had available from the seat belt itself and fastened it all together. So I just raised them four inches and they work great with the seats that way. So this particular assembly saves you about $25, $30. Instead of using the exact correct ones, which you can get if you want to, and you, if you're doing a restoration, but you can save yourself 30 bucks by doing this. And that's the way I've gone about installing the seat belts, the new ones in the truck.